Good morning, Coach Slack here once again, continuing our readings on the Synaxedian, the lives of the saints of the Orthodox Church. On this, the 21st day of October, we celebrate the memory of our Holy Father, Hilarion the Great. Saint Hilarion was born in Palestine in 293, in the village of Thabatha, not far from Gaza. His parents, who were idolaters, sent him to pursue a literary education in Alexandria. There he got to know Christians and discovered the heavenly teaching of the gospel that has made the wisdom of this world foolishness. He heard much talk of St. Anthony, who was renowned throughout Egypt, and set out for the desert to visit him. When he saw the angelic life that Anthony led, he decided to stay at his side with the other disciples of the father of monks. But as the crowds who flocked to the desert for his blessing prevented St. Anthony from attending to silent prayer, he decided to depart to the harsh waste of the inner desert. He gave Alarion his tunic of horsehair and his coat of skin and sent the boy, who was only fifteen, to lead the ascetic life with some companions in the desert around Mayuma in the region of Gaza. Alarion boldly set off to engage in the struggle where, except for bands of robbers that from time to time passed through, no human life was ever seen. There he set about bringing his body into subjection and fled youthful lust by a severe fast. Fifteen figs eaten after sunset was all his daily food. During the day he prayed and was always singing psalms as he worked the arid soil that produced weariness from toil joined to fasting, but nothing that could be sold and tempt to avarice. The devil, assaulted thus in his own domain, attacked the youth as he had done St. Anthony. He appeared to him in the shape of wild animals and tried to frighten him with terrifying inexplicable noises, but all this proved to be in vain, for the young man warded off his attacks by the sign of the cross and took the initiative in the warfare by mocking the impotence of the evil one. From his sixteenth to his twentieth year, Alarion's shelter was a simple cabin made of bulrushes and marsh grasses. Afterwards he built a little low cell that looked more like a tomb than a house. He lay on the hard ground and washed and cut his hair only once a year on Easter day. He never washed a coat of skin that St. Anthony gave him, and wore the same tunic until it fell to pieces. He knew all of Holy Scripture by heart and recited it aloud, standing with fear as though God were visibly present. From his twenty-first to his twenty-seventh year, a few lentils soaked in cold water was, for three years, his daily food, and for the next three he took nothing but bread sprinkled with salt. From his twenty-seventh to his thirtieth year, he lived on wild plants, from the age of 30 to 35, on six ounces of barley bread and a few vegetables, cooked without oil. Then, falling ill and with failing eyesight, he added a little oil to his food, but did not increase his allowance of bread, even though he saw his body growing weaker, and believed his death was near. At an age when others tend to decrease their austerities, he kept to this diet with redoubled fervor, like a young novice until his death. He never ate until after sunset and relinquished his fast neither for the greatest feast nor the gravest illnesses. Through these labors beyond human strength that he undertook for the love of God, not only was Hilarion's heart open to contemplation of heavenly mysteries, but grace overshadowed his body also and gave him the power of working miracles for the consolation of the faithful. He healed the sick and delivered many that were possessed by unclean spirits. By the age of 22, his renown had already spread throughout Palestine and beyond to Egypt and Syria. Crowds of the faithful flocked to him, and many wanted to embrace the angelic life at his side, for, until then, the monastic life had not appeared in Palestine and Syria. So Hilarion became there what St. Anthony was for Egypt. He kept up a correspondence with St. Anthony the Great, who would say to people bringing their sick to him from those regions, why do you give yourselves the trouble of coming so far when you have my son Hilarion in your own country? There were soon 2,000 monks living around St. Hilarion as solitaries in their own cells, and all taking him as their father and guide. Once a year, at the grape harvest, he would visit all the monasteries, bringing their annual provisions and taking the opportunity of gathering together all his disciples. By the time he reached the age of 63, the multitude of brethren under his direction and the crowds of the sick and the faithful that were forever flocking to his desert from all quarters left him no time for silent contemplation. <clears throat> he wept freely as he recalled the first years of his ascesis when he was completely unknown. 
His tears prevailed upon his disciples to let him leave them. But when the day came, more than six thousand wanted to follow him wherever he went. So as not to lose the grace that was in him, he succeeded in persuading them to go back and took with him only forty disciples, able to do endure long journeys on foot, fasting until sunset. On hearing of St. Anthony's death, Ilarion set off for Egypt to venerate all that Anthony's presence there had made holy. <clears throat> he cast himself to the earth, shedding abundant tears at all the places and before every object associated with the great elder. When he came out of St. Anthony's desert, Hilarion went in search of solitude. But wherever he was, be it in the desert or in Alexandria, he spread about him such grace, miracles, and healings that his fame running before him, he was besieged by crowds so as to have no rest. During the three-year tyranny of Julian the Apostate, from 361 to 363, St. Hilarion's monastery near Gaza was destroyed and his monks scattered. The saint himself found refuge in Libya. From thence, he took ship to Sicily, expecting to find solitude in parts where he was unknown. But there, too, he drew the crowds, for compassion and love for mankind constrained him to drive out devils and to heal the sick. He fled once more and made his way to a little town in Dalmatia, still a barbarous region, where he killed by his prayer a monstrous beast that was terrifying the natives and thus converted them to Christianity. He fled by night to escape honors and, and, and embarked on a merchant vessel bound for Cyprus. Scarcely had he set foot there, than possessed folk began to shout, panic-stricken, that Alarion, the servant of Jesus Christ, had come to drive them from the island. Since he needed a new hiding place, he went to an uninhabited part and found a cave, very difficult of access, on the top of a steep mountain. He spent five years there, visited only by his faithful disciple Hezekias, who came from time to time to give him news of Palestine. When Hilarion reached the age of 80, his body worn out by a lifetime of austere assises, he prepared for his departure the hence. He called around him the few faithful who had been able to reach his cave, and, keeping his eyes open as he lay at the point of death, he said, Go forth, O my soul. What do you fear? Go forth. Why are you disquieted within me? You have served Jesus Christ from almost seventy years for almost seventy years, and do you fear death? When he had spoken these words, he gave up his soul to God, and his disciples buried him immediately, as he had told them to do, to avoid the honors the saints receive when they are laid to rest. Some time afterwards Hezekias came to take the body of Saint Hilarion with him to Palestine, so that it might be venerated by the multitude of his disciples. This is also an icon during the readings from the Monastery of Patmos uh, from the 12th century. Through the prayers of thy saints, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Amen.